Welcome back, Time Crunch fans. I'm your host, Coach Adam Pulford, here to answer your questions from you, our audience. It's a good one today, which I thought would be actually a slam dunk, but as it turns out, it stretched me a bit on <laughs> on everything that I knew, um, and it encouraged me to read up on the latest research and reach out to some friends and experts in the field of sport nutrition to fully answer it. Now that I have you on the edge of your seat, let's hear the riveting question. All right, so here it is, glucose versus dextrose. Hey, friends, love the podcast. Thanks for this. Here's a quick question that I can't seem to answer with my internet searching that I bet you can all answer. From a fueling perspective, what's the difference between glucose and dextrose? Some internet sources say that glucose and dextrose are exactly the same thing. Others say that dextrose is a form of glucose. When I search for glucose on consumer websites, Amazon, for example, my search often returns products that say dextrose rather than glucose on the label. I'm interested in making my own sport drink, and these sources suggest that it doesn't matter if I buy glucose powder or dextrose powder, but I recently heard a guest on a different podcast recommend not drinking Gatorade because it contains dextrose instead of glucose. Can you all say whether there is really a difference between them? Many thanks for the excellent podcast, and that's coming from Dan. Yeah. Hey, Dan, thank you for the question, and yes, we can answer that here. Glucose and dextrose are recognized in the body the same way. They're both monosaccharides, so that means that they're simple sugar molecules that can't be broken down any further, and they have the same chemical formula, C6H12O6. Now, here's where my inner nerd got really excited to use my chemistry minor from college. Technically, dextrose, or D-glucose, has a different orientation of its molecular structure. They are what we call isomers. But I'll stop there because that the granular detail of isomerism doesn't really matter when it comes to a sport drink for performance and its absorption in the body. And I probably can't really even do it justice with my handful of uh, semesters of chemistry 20 years ago. But they are the same composition. Focus on this. Our body absorbs it, receives it, uses it in the same matter as glucose. Translation, it's the same thing. <laughs> we inter Now, we do interchange dextrose and glucose often, so it's super confusing. So where does this come from? It super doesn't matter, but look up dextrorotatory, and <laughs> I think I butchered that, but uh, D-E-X-T-R-O-R-O-T-A. O R Y. And that will describe the optical orientation of the isomer that we're talking about. Um, and it, it like shifts that to the right. And that's what they call the D designation. Like I said, that's above my pay grade and it doesn't matter when it comes to the absorption and utilization, but it is fun to read about if, if you think that's fun. So all that to say, so that answers that question for you, Dan, but let's take it a step further though, as it pertains to drink mixes. Maltodextrin is another common ingredient in sport drinks, and it's just a bunch of glucose molecules linked together. But when we ingest this, it's still absorbed at the same rate as glucose and dextrose, okay, same things, around 60 grams an hour, but it's less sweet than pure dextrose or glucose. So Dan, I say that to, to tell you, don't be scared of labels or people that tell you not to drink dextrose. It's fine. It's all glucose. <laughs> okay. Um, now real quick to kind of the optimal absorption. If you add fructose to that combination, so if you have a glucose fructose combination um, in your sport drink mix, that does elevate the absorption up to around that 90 grams and maybe even beyond. So that's where the ratios come into play. We'll talk about more of that, more of that here in, in just a minute. But all of this stuff that I just said, um, I did reach out to nutrition expert, Kristen Arnold of Sport Nutrition for Women, who's been on the podcast several times. And I, I just wanted to verify all of that like nerdy stuff and factual stuff uh, with her. And she gave me the stamp of approval on that. 
And not only did I ask for that, I asked her for the most simple home recipe for a sport drink mix that she could provide, and she did. If you're making your own drink mix, you wanna remember that you want multiple sources of carbohydrates. So that means glucose and fructose. Um, table sugar is actually sucrose, which sucrose is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. So if you made a drink mix that was one part glucose powder and one part table sugar, you effectively get a four to one ratio of glucose to fructose. Now, the reason that I normally use that ratio is that most athletes um, have a harder time metab or digesting fructose. And so it's a more conservative ratio. Some athletes can go all the way up to two to one. So um, two parts glucose to one part fructose. And it's really important to make sure that you're experimenting and that the drink mix that you're making works for you. So the recipe that I have in there is um, relatively high in sodium and electrolytes, and then also contains up to 90 grams of carb for a 20 ounce bottle. I'll read the recipe now. So here's what I'm calling Kristen's simple homemade drink mix recipe. So this makes two 16 ounce bottles of water. So 32 ounces total. Here's the recipe, 32 ounces of water, one quarter teaspoon of table salt, four tablespoons of maple syrup, and then add the flavor of your choice. This could be an ounce of fruit juice, a squeeze of lime juice, a few drops of peppermint oil, or experiment with whatever your favorite flavors are. Okay, and the nutritional facts behind this is per 16 ounce bottle, so that's one serving, is you've got uh, about 104 calories total, 27 grams of carbohydrate, zero grams of fat, zero grams of protein, and around 300 milligrams of sodium. One thing you'll notice about Kristen's recipe it uses maple syrup, no fancy powders or mixes. Why? And what is maple syrup? It's primarily sucrose, which is a disaccharide composed of glucose and fructose in a one-to-one -one ratio. This is essentially table sugar. Now there's nothing wrong with drinking this. It performs well, but our body has to break down uh, sucrose into glucose and fructose via the mouth and the small intestine in order to use it. At the ratios Kristen provided above, your body shouldn't have any issues with this at any intensity on the bike. For me personally, I, you know, so maybe I'm just lazy, but I buy my own drink mixes. I find it to be more simple, less to worry about. And I also have high carb mixes for longer endurance days and with, you know, hard efforts kind of like um, intermittent throughout the day. And I also have moderate carb mixes for the shorter, more intense days, or sometimes for me personally, like a hotter day, um, the moderate carbohydrate mixes perform really, really well. So we're brand neutral here on the podcast. So here are some examples that work for my athletes and, and or myself. Higher carb drink mixes. So we're talking 80 to 100 grams of carbohydrate per bottle or per serving. We're talking about like the scratch super high carb, never second 90, or the SIS beta fuel for good examples. Moderate carbohydrate mixes. Now these are anything between 25 grams and 60 grams of carbohydrate per bottle. This is your scratch hydration, never second 30, or Morton 160. If you're making your own sport drink mix and you want to go beyond what Kristen Arnold recommended, I suggest using a two sugar combination with glucose and fructose in the ratios of two to one or up to one to 0.8. Now I've linked to good research and further reading about both and how they perform in laboratory settings. Um, I use both personally. I have athletes that also use both in, in drink mixes and they both work. So explore it for yourself, find what works best for you for the specific training day or race day. Um, but if you're making your own drink mix, here we go. Okay. First of all, play around with the different amounts of carbohydrates by using the ratios that I gave you above. So two to one or one to 0.8. If you're brewing, say for example, a 60 gram drink mix batch, that would look like 40 grams of maltodextrin and 20 grams of fructose. And that's a two to one ratio. Or 
36 grams of maltodextrin and 24 grams of fructose. That's the one to 0.8 ratio. Now, a chef friend of mine told me, uh, suggested trying sodium citrate for your sodium of choice. It's a little bit more mild and has a slight tartness uh, with subtle saltiness. And you can try one to two grams per bottle um, at first and then scale up from there. So one to two grams is about 250 to 500 milligrams uh, of sodium per serving, respectively. Now, I, I'd aim for this quantity of carbohydrate on your training days, if you're, if you're making your own homebrew. 30 to 60 grams uh, for endurance days that you're riding 90 minutes or less, and that can be like with some intensity or it's hot and humid out. Go up to 90 grams for your long, harder days, and I'll put a little asterisk there and say, do you really need to go higher than that? per bottle. If, if your whole goal is kind of that, you know, 90 grams per hour and up to now, <laughs> the reason I put an asterisk on there is for most of us, amateur athletes, not in the pro tour, not doing grand, um, tours and in, in, you know, 20 days of racing back to back to back, uh, go ahead and listen to my podcast with Alex Hutchinson on high carb drink mixes and endurance training. Okay. So this 90 to a hundred, we know that to be um, the upper limit now of um, uh, absorption and digestion in the human gut when you're blending the sugars together. Do we need to go beyond that? Do you actually absorb it and utilize it? Listen to that podcast. So, and then also a reminder of just use water or uh, electrolytes on your easy days and you'll be, you'll be just fine. So play with the ratios, see what's right for you. Overall, my advice on the mixology f explorers out there is, yeah, go buy some maltodextrin, dextrose, and fructose and work with the right combination for your flavor preferences and demands on the bike for training, racing, or just going easy. So finally, in closing, the drink mix multiverse can be a very confusing place when we start talking about the best blend of carbohydrates or the perfect ratios of sugar for optimal hydration, all those, you know, buzz terms. It's even more complicated when we have two words for the same thing, like glucose and dextrose, for example. So Dan, thank you for writing in with this question. It's, it's really, it was really fun to go down that carbohydrate hole for the whole podcast today. Uh, but overall, I want to, I want everyone to just keep it simple. Okay. First of all, you can use what you have at home as Chris and Arnold advise in the drink mix recipe that we provided. Uh, number two, buy your own drink mixes and don't worry about it if you want to be lazy like me. Okay. And you can buy high carb or moderate carb uh, mixes and they're already optimized uh, for all the performance needs without having to uh, think more about it. Finally, though, if, if you know, and, and I do encourage curiosity. So, um, if you are curious and you want to save some money, you can, you can buy in bulk and you can make your own drink mix at home. Now this will take some work and some experimentation and you'll fail <laughs> as you learn. But once you find the right combination, then it's rinse and repeat. Um, and you'll be saving money by not spending, um, all that for, for the other drink mixes that are out there, typically speaking. And I do have friends in, in athletes that make their own and, and yeah, it is a lot cheaper. So, but just know that there's going to be some work on your end to find, uh, the proper ratios and flavors and things like that. So with that said, I want to thank you all again for, uh, not only listening to the podcast, but sharing your questions, challenges, and curiosities by writing into CTS. If you're new to the show, um, and you don't know about our Q and a platform, head over to trainwright.com backslash podcast and click on ask a training question. Your questions get sent directly to me and we do our best to answer those questions on upcoming episodes. So that's it. That's our show for today. If you like what you heard, please share it with a training partner or a friend as that's the best way to grow the show and make sure that you keep getting the actionable training device for your athletic journey. Be sure to come back next week for more. And until then, keep getting out there and training right.